infections. So uh, let me go directly to the surface infections. So in the superficial mycosis, we have surface infections are cutaneous. So in the surface infections, uh, these surface infections are strictly, they will only infect the dead skin, or dead skin cells of our body. It can be either uh, dead skin cells, uh, nails, or even hair. So these three together, we can say surface infections. So this surface infections happens because of three types. So we have three, three surface infections. They include tinea vesicolor, tinea nigra, and piadra. So tinea vesicolor means it is an infection which is characterized by presence of uh, uh, patchy discoloration of skin in the chest, abdomen, back, and neck. It is caused by a fungi called pityosporum orbicular. This can be identified in the KOH by presence of non-septed hyphae and uh, yeast cells. On the culture, it will, uh, within five to seven days, we will get colonies of, uh, of the growth in the culture. So this is all about tinea vesicolor. Then the tinea nigra means, tinea nigra is caused by hot air which is an infection to the uh, keratinized tissue of our body that includes your palm and uh, toes. OK, so this can be characterized by presence of a black or brown color macular patches on the keratinized part. That means on the palms or in the sole. OK, so on the direct microscopy, you will see branched hyphae with separate, separate branched hyphae you will see and you will also see budding yeast cells. In the, cul in the culture, you will see moist colonies. OK, so this is all about tinea nigra. Then coming to the piedra, piedra is an infection of hair. Piedra can occur due to, uh, these are of two types, black piedra and white piedra. Okay, black piadra is occurred due to P. hot air, whereas white piadra is occurred due to Trichosporum belgi. Okay, so in the piadra, you will see ascospores. So ascospores present in the piadra infection. In the culture, you can also see arthrospores. Arthrospores, conidia can be seen in the culture, whereas in the direct microscopy, you will see ascospores. Okay, so this is all about the surface infections. Uh, is this clear, students? Is everyone clear until this part of uh, lecture? Any more doubts in... In the mycology until now. No, right? Sir, I have a question. Yes, what is the question, Simon? Simon Sir, in the, oh. in the beginning, that time you have tried to say something about the snake bone can decay, but the human, but the human bone, if someone dies, the bone cannot decay. So why is it the snake bones can decay? Bones cannot decay. They're very simple, Simon, because uh, bone is made up of mineral, which is calcium. And, uh, you know, the digesting minerals is very hard. For digesting calcium, you need uh, uh, chelating agents and uh, biologically chelating agents we cannot uh, uh, prepare, okay? So that is why we cannot eat direct uh, this organic substances such as this uh, calcium or any minerals we cannot consume directly. For uh, Actually, minerals is not a part of our diet. We need traces amount of minerals only for the purpose of uh, uh, they will act as a cofactors. They will only act as a cofactors, but they cannot uh, involve in the metabolism. That means simply we cannot digest minerals. Uh, since bone is extensively made up of this uh, calcium, that particular calcium part, no living organism can digest calcium part. That's it. It's a simple answer. Uh, or simply, students, we can only digest amino acids. We can only digest amino acids, lipids, and proteins. Proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates can be digested, but we cannot digest any minerals as such. Like uh, you cannot digest magnesium, you cannot digest pure calcium, pure magnesium, pure lithium. That kind of mechanism our body does. We don't have. Not only we, all life forms don't have the mechanism to eat pure form of any minerals. Minerals are inanimate objects. So that is why uh, the bones will be left. So all the body parts will be digested except bones because bones are extensively made up of this calcium mineral. Okay, that is the reason, Simon. We don't have mechanism of metabolizing a mineral. That's it. Okay, mineral is the simplest biomolecule. It's not a biomolecule, actually. It's a molecule. We can only digest biomolecules, a complex biomolecule, such as starch, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins. These can be digestible, but we cannot digest uh, uh, the raw minerals. Uh, unfortunately, the bone is made up of a raw mineral, which is calcium. Bone is a deposit of calcium mineral. Okay, that's it. Um, that's a good question, by the way. Um, coming to my point, so this is this is all about the uh, superficial infections. So in the superficial infections, we have tinea vesicola, tinea nigra, and uh, piadra. Then 
so the, in this slide it has given description about what is a tinea vesicular what is uh, nigra and what is pietra okay so this you can go through it then the next lecture is all about dermatophytes so in today's lecture we will discuss in detail about this dermatophytal infections dermatophytal infections are also called cutaneous infections which is a type of superficial mycosis in the superficial mycosis we have surface infections and cutaneous infections so in the cutaneous we have infections we have this dermatophytes so let us see this dermatophytes in detail in today's lecture so can i can i proceed students any more doubts no right shall i proceed are you listening me students today everyone very dull. yes sir okay, okay. Yes, sir. Fine. So coming to the dermatophytes. So let us see what is this dermatophytes. OK, so dermatophytes students, we will we will see all these six headings. We will discuss about introduction to dermatophytes, then classification of dermatophytes, species present in the dermatophytes, clinical infections caused by the dermatophytes, laboratory diagnosis of dermatophytes and treatment to the dermatophytal infections. So all these six points I will cover in today's lecture. Don't worry, it won't be a lengthy lecture. It's very simple. So coming to the introduction, so dermatophytes can able to uh, penetrate or they can go up to the second level of skin. That means after dead skin layer, it, that means after epidermis, you have cutaneous layer. So uh, dermatophytes can go up to the cutaneous layer of the skin. Okay. So they can they can infect skin, hair, and nails. In the skin, it can go up to the uh, cutaneous layer of the skin. They can also break down keratin and they can utilize the keratin and they are incapable. They cannot penetrate into subcutaneous layer of the skin. Keep in mind, if they are able to penetrate subcutaneous means we may classify them under subcutaneous infection. So dermatophytes can go up to cutaneous layer, but they cannot go uh, uh, beneath cutaneous layer. That means after subcutaneous, it cannot go up to the subcutaneous layer. And uh, uh, clinically, these dermatophytal infections are called ringworm infections because they resemble like a parasitic infection. But of course, they are a fungus, but it's it looks like a parasitic infection. That is why they are also called ringworm infections. Okay, And some of these dermatophytes, uh, they will release certain enzymes and those enzymes will cause allergic reaction in our body. So we may get allergic reactions because of dermatophytal infection. So these are few points about dermatophytes. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, this is all about uh, dermatophytes. They can cause uh, the following infections. So you can see the pictures here. So all these pictures are related to dermatophytal infections. They can cause skin infection. They can cause hair infection. They can also cause nail infections. All three types of infections can be done by the dermatophytes. And sometimes our body will react to these dermatophytes. Since they are going up to the cutaneous layer of the skin, the immune system may evoke and uh, immune system may cause certain uh, hypersensitivity reactions against these particular dermatophytes, resulting in formation of eczema on the skin. That means rashes on the skin, which is due to allergic reaction. So these rashes can be seen in the dermatophytal infections. So this is all about the basics in dermatophytes. Then let us see the classification of dermatophytes. These dermatophytes are classified depending upon their genus and depending upon their habitat. So but depending upon the genus, dermatophytes are divided into three types. We have three types of genuses in the dermatophyte. They include trichophytons, trichophyton, microsporum, and epidermophyton genuses. So trichophyton can cause infection in hair, skin, and nail, whereas microsporum can cause infection in hair and skin, whereas epidermophyton can cause uh, infection to skin and nail. So these are the three genuses of dermatophytes. What are the three genuses? Trichophyton genus, microsporum genus, and epidermophyton. So we have three genuses, and they, based upon their habitat, these dermatophytes are again divided into three types. Habitat means where they are living. Some fungi will live in the soil. They are called geophilic fungi, okay, geophilic dermatophytes. Some fungi will live in the humans. Those fungi are called anthropophilic fungi. Some fungi can live in the animals such as goat, sheep, cat, dog. Such fungi are called zoophilic. So depending upon their habitat, these are of three types. One is anthropophilic. That means this fungi will uh, natural habitat is humans. Then zoophilic, this fungi natural habitat is animals. 
whereas the geophilic means these fungi natural habit is soil. So this is the uh, overall classification of dermatophytes. Depending upon genus, we have trichophyton, microsporum, epidermophyton. Depending upon their habitat, we have anthropophilic, geophilic, and geophilic. Now let us see in detail about the species present in the dermatophytes. That means what type of species present in trichophyton, what species present in microsporum, and what species present in epidermophyton. Okay, so let us see the species of uh, dermatophytes. So we have three types of uh, genuses. We have trichophyton genus, we have microsporum genus, and we have epidermophyton genus. So let us see the species present in individual genuses. So the first genus is trichophyton that causes infection in hair, skin, and nail. The species that present in trichophyton genus includes T. rubrum, T. mantographrites, T. sconiali, T. vilosum, and T. varicosum. T stands for trichophyton. Trichophyton rubrum, trichophyton mantographites, trico, uh, trichophyton sconiali, trichophyton vilosum, and trichophyton Vericosum. So these are the species in trichophyton. Okay, T. rubrum, T. mentographites, T. sconiali, T. vilosum, and T. vericosum are the species in trichophyton. Then microsporum species include we have three species: M. gypsum, M. canis, and M. ordini. Microsporum gypsum, microsporum canis, and microsporum ordini are the species in microsporum. Then the species in epidermophyton include epidermophyton flocosum. So only one species, which is epidermophyton flocosum. Now, students, we need to identify the morphology of T. rubrum, T. mentographites, T. scolinelli. That means we need to know the morphology of all, of all these species. So that will be the next lecture. How to identify T. rubrum, how to identify gypsum, and how to identify flocosum. So that we will see. Okay. So then all of these dermatophytes, all of these dermatophytes will cause certain infections we have names for those infections there are some dermatophytes that will cause infection on the scalp there are some dermatophytes that will cause infection on the nails there are some dermatophytes that will cause infection to the skin there are some dermatophytes that, that can cause infection to the face so what is the what species cause what infection and what is the infection name now let us see the infections caused by the dermatophytes okay so till now I discussed about uh, uh, introduction to dermatophytes. Then I discussed about classification of dermatophytes. Dermatophytes classified depending upon the genus and the habitat. Depending upon the genus, we have trichophyton, microsporum, epidermophyton. Depending upon the habitat, we have anthropophilic, geophilic, geophilic. Then depending upon genus, trichophyton, micro and epidermo. Trichophyton, we have the species. Species include T. rubrum, T. mantographite, T. sponiali. Microsporum include M. gypsum, M. canis, M. ordini. And epidermophyton include E. flocculosum. So these are the species in the dermatophytes. Then the part, the third part of this lecture will be the clinical infections caused by the dermatophytes. What type of clinical infections caused by these dermatophytes? Let us see now. Now there is there are a few. Uh, uh, there is a dermatophytal infection that will cause infection to the scalp. Such infections are called tinea capitis. So this is tinea captitis. Are you listening to me, students? Are you following me? Yes, sir. OK. Yes, sir. Only the names are difficult, but concept will be very simple in mycology. OK, don't worry about the names. Names you can buy hurt by staring one or two times. Just understand the concept. So first of, the first infection is tinea captitis. Tinea captitis means it is a fungal infection that involves the scalp. OK. So this particular infection is called tinea captitis. This tinea captitis is caused by microsporum and trichophyton species. Microsporum and trichophyton species will cause this uh, tinea captitis. Then favus. Favus is one of the you know, uh, ugliest uh, fungal infection. I will show you favus uh, uh, pictures here. So these are the some pictures of tinea captitis. Then second one is tinea uh, favus. So this is favus. So favus is very severe form of uh, uh, dandruff infection, actually. So this is a severe uh, fungal dandruff infection. So here there is almost no hair and there is 90% uh, of the scalp is uh, uh, engulfed by the fungi with hypersensitivity reaction. So this particular condition is called favus. 
this phagus is caused by t sconilini and t vilosum so uh, what is the what is this t students can anyone say t stands for what it is a genus name what is this t the trichophyton trichophyton uh, trichophyton very good trichophyton sconilini and trichophyton vilosum will cause this phagus disease so here you can see the picture of how phagus how you know uncomfortable this for the patient okay so this is a phagus condition phagus disease then third one is tinea corporis so tinea corporis means it will it is a fungal infection of non hairy part of the skin so it will cause infection to the skin where there is no hair so this is non hairy uh, part of the skin you will see this infection which is caused by t rubrum and dermatophytes so some t rubrum and other dermatophytal species will cause this tinea corporis infection then we have ectotrix and endotrix as the name suggests both ectotrix and endotrix are the hair infection if the fungus present outside the hair shaft then it is called ectotrix if the fungus present on the surface of hair shaft then it is called endotrix so let me show you the pictures of ectotrix and endotrix so ectotrix means this fungus will present outside on the periphery of hair shaft whereas endotrix means this will present on the shaft of the hair okay so this is the major difference between ectotrix and endotrix which is a hair infection okay so these are the clinical infections caused by the dermatophytes they will cause these five types of infections one is tinea capitis phagus tinea corporis ectotrix and endotrix ectotrix is caused by t rubrum t mantographites whereas endotrix is caused by t sconilini t tonsurans and t vilosum so these are the clinical infections caused by the dermatophytes then laboratory diagnosis diagnosis of this dermatophytes so for lab diagnosis the first one you need is the specimens so you can collect either skin specimens hair or nail specimens okay so there's there are the three samples so the specimens include skin hair and nail then on direct microscopy you can perform direct microscopy on 10% koh okay you can also perform culture on sda culture okay so on sda culture you can perform uh, this uh, culturing of back, uh, this fungi okay you can incubate at or around 25 to 30 degrees centigrade for 3 weeks within 3 weeks you can able to identify the fungi depending upon the polymorphology and pigment production okay so what type of quality morphology you will see what type of pigmentation they will you will see that i will discuss in the next slide so how to identify trichophyton species how to identify epidermophyton species and how to identify microsporum species this three i will discuss in the next slide so the first one will be trichophyton species so in the trichophyton species don't worry students i will only keep few examples for you so i i have only included two examples so in the trichophyton i will discuss only about this trichophyton rubrum mantographites and vilosum that's it so first one is rubrum so this rubrum has a tear shaped microconidia and it will form red color pigment on the river side of the sda medium so on the river side of the sda medium you will see red color then you will see tear shaped microconidia and also this is ureus negative if you done ureus test this uh, t rubrum will cause negative so this is how you can able to identify the t rubrum okay t rubrum has a tear shaped microconidia along with hyphae it will cause red color on the river side of medium it is ureus negative in nature so this is how you can identify t rubrum whereas t mantographites t mantographites by the morphology itself you can see it looks like a grape a cluster of grapes okay so it looks like a grape like clusters of microconidia it has grape like clusters of microconidia it has no pigment on the river side of the medium and it is ureus positive just opposite to t rubrum it has grape like clusters it, will, it there is no red color pigmentation and it is ureus positive in nature so this is the major difference between t rubrum and t mantographites okay then the same same thing here okay these pictures are very important then other trichophyton species include t vilosum t sconilini and t vericosum so as the name suggests t vilosum this t vilosum on the uh, upon growing this t vilosum on the sda you will see violet color formation of violet color indicates presence of t vilosum okay so that is how you can identify t vilosum whereas t sconilini t sconilini you will see alter 
Arthler hyphae. So presence of Arthler hyphae is a significant or characteristic feature for identifying T sconinally. Whereas T vericosum, T vericosum, you will see uh, this one. You will see chlamydiospores. So in the T vericosum, you can see presence of chlamydiospores in the STM area. So presence of chlamydiospores is an identifying feature for uh, identifying T vericosum. Whereas vilosum, you will see violet color colonies. Whereas sconidally, you will see Arthler hyphae. So this is how you will identify the trichophyton species. So the five species include T rubrum, T mantographites, T vilosum, T sconidally, and T vericosum. What type of trichophyton will cause grape-like cluster students? Grape-like cluster seen in what species? Can anyone say? Like clusters of conidiae. Is seen in what type of trichophyton species? Can you tell me? I'm asking a question. In what trichophyton species you will see? Very good. T mantographites. And is it urease positive or negative? T mantographites. Positive. Positive. Urease positive. Very positive. good. Very good. So that's it, students. This is all about trichophyton species. Then second one is microsporum species. Remember, microsporum species, we have two types, M. canis, M. gypsum, and another one is M. ordini. So M. canis, as the name suggests, this M. canis is an infection to cats and dogs. Canine, canine species, that means cats and dogs. So this is a fungal infection to cats and dogs, whereas gypsum is a fungal infection which is present in the soil. Okay. So the major differences are uh, in the M. canis, you will see curve shape and both has macroconidia, whereas in M. canis, you can see curve shaped end. Okay. So it is spindle shaped, rough walled with curve shape and curved end is present on the uh, M. canis, whereas in M. gypsum, rounded ends are present. Spindle shaped, round, and macroconidia is present. There is no curve present in the M. gypsum. So this is the major difference between the M. canis and M. gypsum. M. G M. canis in both you will see macroconidia, whereas in M. canis it has curve end, whereas in the M. gypsum round end present. So that is the difference between M. canis and M. gypsum. And last and final, so M. gypsum is responsible for favus. So M. gypsum is responsible for favus. Favus disease is caused by M. gypsum. Okay, then. Uh, Last and final is M, uh, sorry, E, epidermophyton floccosum. So, epidermophyton floccosum is also a macroconidia, but what type of macroconidia it is? Branched macroconidia. It, pre it, it present in, in triplets. It is a branched macroconidia with round ends. And it have a uh, septa, a broad septa can be seen in epidermophyton floccosum. So, this is the identifying feature of E floccosum. So it is club shaped. So the macroconidia is club shaped with the septa and it is round in nature. Okay. Branched club shape club shaped macroconidia present in epidermophyton. And also you can see numerous chlamydia spores in epidermophyton floclosum infection. So multiple chlamydia spores can be present in the epidermophyton floclosum infection. So this is all about the epidermophyton. Okay, so it is uh, club uh, chlamydia spores are present, club shaped, and it is branched club shaped macroconidia present in the epidermophyton floclosum. Then, how, what is the treatment for these dermatophytes? So, the treatment for dermatophytes is very simple. You can use either oral gris, uh, grisiofolvin, or you can also you okay, that is the uh, best choice. So, either you can use topical antifungal agents or you can use oral. Uh, Griseofalvin for uh, uh, treating this particular uh, dermatophytes. So dermatophytes can be treated by using oral griseofalvin or topical antifungal uh, ointments. So this is all about dermatophytes, students. Just a second. Yes, no? Just check once. You send me this uh, even data, this one, right? Only one webinar, webinar and workshop, right? Uh, so this is all about dermatophyte students. I will do a quick revision and I will end this lecture. Okay.
So in today's lecture, we discuss in detail about the dermatophytes. So the yes. introduction to dermatophytes include it will cause he, skin, hair and nail infections. They can they can break down keratin tissue. They cannot penetrate to subcutaneous layer of the skin. Clinically, dermatophytal infections are called ringworm infections. OK, sometimes these dermatophytes can cause hypersensitivity reactions or allergic reactions. This is the introduction to dermatophytes. Then classification dermatophytes are the, divided depending upon the genus and habitat. Depending upon the genus, we have three types of dermatophytes, trypophyton species, microsporum species, and epidermophyton. Depending upon the habitat, we have anthropophilic, geophilic, and geophilic. Anthropophilic to man, geophilic to animals, geophilic to soil. Then the species of trichophyton include T. rubrum, T. mantographites, T. sconelli, vilosum, vericosum, whereas microsporum include I think so. Uh, M. gypsum, M. canis, and M. ordini, whereas epidermophyton we have E. flocrosum. The infections caused by these uh, uh, dermatophytes include T. carpexis, Favus, T. corporis, ectotrix, and endotrix. So these are the infections caused by this. Then lab diagnosis depends, depends upon its specimen, microscopic culture. Then the variations of this species include T. rubrum has a micro or tear shaped conidium and it is ureus negative and it will cause red color pigment. Whereas in the mantagraphites, it is ureus positive, no red color pigmentation and it has cluster like grape like cluster conidium. Then we discussed about the T. vilosum, where you will see violet color colonies, T. scolinelli, where you will see chlamydia or chlamydios ultra hyphae, and in the varicosum, you will see chlamydiospores. In the microsporum, you have canis and gypsum. The difference between canis and gypsum is one has carudin and the other one does not have any carudin. Both are macroconidia. The last and finally is a flocculosum. In the flocculosum, you will see multiple macroconidia, separated macroconidia condition, which is club shaped in nature. Then the treatment is oral glucophilfin, and you can also apply certain antifungal ointments on the skin. That's it. This is all about the dermophytes. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. If not, I will end this lecture. Can end this class, students? Any doubts in today's lecture? I will. Not okay. Not I will upload. Fine. I will upload this oh, in the sir. YouTube, and you can go for revisions in the YouTube. Okay. Thank you very much, students. See you. See you, students. Thank you, sir. Yes.